Joe James. In this video, we're going to apply Bellman Ford's algorithm to a directed graph, which will help us find the shortest path to every vertex in the graph from a designated source vertex, which we'll call S. So the first thing we're going to do is list out all the edges in the graph with the cost to that edge. We'll do this alphabetically. So we're going to list out all the edges from vertex A, which A only has one vertex, AE, at a cost of negative 3. All the edges out of B, B only has one edge, B to C, at a cost of 7. All the edges out of C, we only have C to F at a cost of negative 5. D has no outbound edges. E has an edge from E to B with a cost of 1, E to G with a cost of 6, and E to H with a cost of negative 3. And F has one outbound edge, F to B with a cost of 8. G has one outbound edge, G to D with a cost of 2, and H to G with a cost of 1. And lastly, we have this little edge up here. Let's not forget about the edge from S to A with a cost of 2. So that is all of our outbound edges in the graph. Now what we want to find is the distance to each vertex from the source vertex. So we're going to use D for the distance. We're going to track this on this little table. And we're going to track the distance and the pi, or the predecessor vertex, for each one of these vertices. And we're going to do this iteratively. We're going to iterate through each edge. We're going to relax that edge, which we'll explain in a second. And when the number of times we're going to do that is V times. We have nine vertices, so we're going to do this nine times. So we're going to need nine iterations. We'll start out with iteration number one. So let's start relaxing edges. We're going to relax all these edges nine times. Edge AE with a cost of negative three allows us to get from A to E with a cost of negative three. Look, our cost to get to A is already infinity, so adding negative three to that is not going to help us. From B to C with a cost of seven, well, our cost to get to B is already infinity, so it doesn't matter what it costs us to get from B to C. And from C to F, in fact, we can look through here and we can see, wow, all of these are not going to make any difference whatsoever. The only edge that has a cost to get to it of zero is edge S. So the first iteration, the only thing that really makes any difference at all are outbound edges from vertex S. So we have edge S to A with a cost of 2. That means that we can now get to A with a distance of 0 plus 2, which means 2. And the predecessor to A is going to be S. So we found a path to A from S with a cost of 2. So that's all we found in iteration 1. So let's start iteration 2 now. We can relax every edge, but the only ones that really make a difference are outbound edges from S and A because every other, er, other, every other vertex has a cost of infinity to get to it. So outbound edges from those vertices are not going to make any difference in, in iteration 2. So let's look at other outbound edges from S, there are no other ones, just to A. Outbound edges from A, we have A to E with a cost of negative 3. So that means that we can get from S to A with a cost of 2, and a cost from A to E with a cost of negative 3. So that means that we can get 2E in negative 1 with a predecessor value of A. And we graphically can see this, S to A with a cost of 2, and negative 3 to get to E, so we're now at a cost of negative 1 to get to E. That's iteration 2. Let's now look at iteration 3. The only edges that matter are outbound edges from S, A, and E at this point. So let's take a look at those. And E has a whole bunch of outbound edges, so this is going to get interesting. And it's important that we relax these in alphabetical order again, so we're going to start at the top. A to E with a cost of negative 3. Well, we've actually already considered that edge. And then e to b with a cost of negative 1. Well, we can get to e with a cost of 1. Now we can get, for one more, we can get to b. That means that b has a cost of 0 coming from edge e. And graphically, we can see that. s to a to e to b. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So b is costing us 0 to get there following that route. Uh, let's go on to the next edge. E to G with a cost of 6. Well, it costs us negative 1 to get to E. We get to G with 6 more than that. So that's going to cost us 5 to get to G with a predecessor of E. Okay, and E to H with a cost of negative 3. 
Well, we're at negative 1, negative 3, so that's going to be negative 4 to get to h. And the predecessor is e. So that concludes our third iteration. Let's now do a fourth iteration. Uh, so we'll start at the top again. a to e with the cost of negative 3, that's not going to change anything. b to c with the cost of 7. Well, we don't have a route to c yet, and we can get there for 7 more than it costs us to get to b. So 0 plus 7 is 7, and the predecessor is vertex b. So by stopping at vertex b on the way to c, we can reach c in 7. Now c to f with a cost of negative 5. Well, we were getting to f in infinity. If we stop at c, it takes us 7 to get there. We add negative 5 to that, we get 2 to get to vertex f by stopping at c. Now let's look at e to b with a cost of 1. Uh, actually, we've already factored that in. These outbound edges from e are really not going to change anything anymore. So f to b with a cost of 8. We already have a pretty cheap route to b. We can't get there any cheaper by stopping at f. g to d with a cost of 2. Well, we get to g in 5, so we can get to d in 7 by stopping at vertex g. So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, h to g with a cost of 1. We were getting to h in negative 4. Now we can get to g in negative 3. That's better than taking route e. So let's take this. We'll stop at vertex h on the way to g. And graphically we can see that, look, it costs us 6 to get from e to g. And that's the original path we had. Wow, if we go through h, it costs negative 3 plus 1, so it only costs negative 2 to get from e to g taking this route, so it's a better deal. And probably next iteration, what we'll see is taking g to d, we found a cheaper route to d, so this is going to be cheaper. h to g with the cost of 1, we've already taken that route, and s to a is not going to make any difference. So let's do iteration 5. So we'll start again at a to e. That's not going to change anything. We've already found our best route to E. B to C with a cost of 7. We already have that factored in. C to F with a cost of negative 5. Yeah, we already have that factored in. So 7 minus 5 is 2. And all the outbound edges from E we've already factored in. F to B with a cost of 8. F is 2. Add 8 to that. Yeah, we can't get a cheaper route to be taking F. G to D with the cost of 2. Well, it costs us negative 3 to get to G, so we can get to D for negative 1. So this is a faster route to get to D. Instead of 7, it only costs negative 1. Okay. So our original route was S, A, E, G, D. Now we're taking S, A, E, H, G, D. And the predecessor value stays the same. It's already g. We just updated the new cost to get to g. h to g, our cost to h is negative 4. Add 1 to that, and we're at negative 3 for g, so we've already factored that in. And s to a of 2, and we've already factored this in. So let's go to iteration 6. a to e with the cost of negative 3. Uh, we've already reached a in 2 and negative 1 to e, so that's not going to change. Our outbound edges from e, e to b of 1, uh, we're at negative 1, so we're already at b is 0, so that's already factored in. Uh, e to g with the cost of 6, we're reaching e and negative 1. Add 6 to that, you get something much greater than negative 3, so that doesn't help us. e to h with the cost of negative 3, we're already at negative 1 to e, and we add this negative 3 in, we're at negative 4 to h, so we've already factored that in. f to b with a cost of 8 costs 2 to get to f. We add 8 to that, uh, does not improve our route to b at all. g to d with a cost of 2, well, we're already at d in negative 1, and we were at g in negative 3, so we've already taken that route. h to g with a cost of 1. So we're in h in negative 4 and g in negative 3. So we've already factored that in. And s to a with a cost of 2. So in iteration 6, we didn't make any changes. We didn't find any more shorter routes to any of these vertices. 
So that means we're really done. We could do three more iterations, but we're not going to improve our routes to any vertex in the graph. So we found the shortest route from S to every vertex in the graph. Now there's one less check that we have to apply for Bellman Ford to make sure that this is a valid solution. And that is, we have to make sure there are no negative cycles. Now you can look at the graph and you can see that there is one cycle in the graph. B to C to F to B to C to F to B to C to F. So you could continue taking this cycle over and over again and if it turned out that it was actually a negative cost in this cycle, let's say it was each, each route was negative one and you could take, take a turn around this cycle and it would be negative three. Well, you'd continue to get shorter and shorter routes approaching negative infinity by just circling. So negative cycles give you an invalid result for Bellman Ford. But we can see that this is not a negative cycle because it costs us 8 to get from F to B and 7 to get from B to C. So that's 15. And then we only cut 5 off of that. We get a positive 10 to get back to F. So every cycle costs us 10. And there are no other cycles in the graph that I can see. So uh, I can see there are no negative cycles, but we still have to understand how the negative cycles check is applied because for larger graphs, it won't be obvious, right? So what we do is we go through each edge and we say the cost to get to E has to be less than or equal to the cost to get to A minus 3. So let's look at that. The cost to get to E is negative 1 and it has to be less than or equal to 2 minus 3. Well, they're equal in this case. The cost to get to C must be less than or equal to, well, that's 7. The cost to get to B, 0 plus 7. So they're equal. Uh, and we can continue on. Actually all these check out. And there are no negative cycles in the graph. So we have a valid solution. So this is our solution. It tells us the distance to every vertex in the graph. And the route. We're able to trace the route by looking at the predecessor vertex or the pi value. That concludes this video on Bellman Ford's algorithm. Please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.